Yeah, man. We just been sitting around talking about fashion. Fashion? Yeah. Well, I'm no fashion plate, that's for sure. Actually, even when I go to the ring, you know, you see a lot of guys with feathered boas and sequin robes like Ric Flair. Mm -hmm. Nothing fancy they had about Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Just a flag of the United States of America and a two by four. Ho! I think everybody should start off the morning with a big ho. You're right. One thing about being a wrestler is that you do have to have your own personal style to set you aside from other wrestlers, you know? And one thing I like about you is you just kept it clean and cut and just timelessness. You just came up there to fuck a motherfucker up. You well, about what you look like. I tell you, it's so important to have the right character, you know? Like, for Hacksaw, there was no way I was going to be handsome Jimmy Duggan, you know? <laughs> so I had to come up with the right gimmick, and Hacksaw kind of fits. How did you come up with the whole Hacksaw thing? Started off wrestling as Big Jim Duggan. Mm. And I wore a long gold bathrobe to the ring, you know? Oh, shit. So finally, Vince McMahon Sr., the old man, and Arnie Skoll, and they called me in the office. And they're like, kid, you might have a future, but come up with something better than Big Jim and get rid of that gold <laughs> bathrobe. <laughs> so every wrestler has their own signature move, right? It's called your finishing move. Mm -hmm. When you get ready to do a finish, everybody knows what your finish is. The Steiner Stein. Mm -hmm. Jake the Snake developed the DDT. Yeah, my favorite was Shawn Michaels with the sweet chin music. That was just because the name, and I felt like that was an easy way for me to ask a girl for a blowjob. Sweet chin music? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what's the most dangerous thing you've done in the ring? Uh, probably wrestle Andre, but oh, really? like, whole different deal. Cause you know he didn't really wrestle; he just squashed you. you oh know? shit! We were doing our Saturday night main event show at the Garden in New York, and Andre he went to grab me by his throat, and his thumb just hit my lip, boom, and knocked my lip off. My lip fell oh, down. Really? Blood's cascading down my chest, and Andre's got me by the throat. And he's choking me down. I'm down on my knees. I feel around. Boom! I got the two by four. Boom! I hit the big giant between the eyes. He goes down like a huge redwood tree. <laughs> Oh, shit. WWE goes off the air with me standing over Andre the Giant covered in blood. Ho! Ho! <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and that bumped me from a mid-card guy to a main event guy. Took your lip off in the process. Yeah, yeah, shit. Pretty much, but it looked good. Did it? If you're going to do it, do it on TV. <laughs> exactly, you hate to be at some exactly. small show and get potatoed. Oh, yeah. People used to say, you guys use blood capsules, don't you? No, I've seen people cutting oh, themselves. I wish it was a blood capsule. It's a razor blade, yeah, right? Yeah. You pop that juice. <laughs> They come <laughs> Guys, <laughs> that's one thing that I always was into about wrestling that I never looked at it as fake or anything like that because I knew you getting in the ring, you're putting your fucking body on the line, nothing is fake about that. Yeah, injuries are prevalent, like mm -hmm. I said, because you got two big guys out there flying around. You're on television, you're in front of thousands of people. Adrenaline pumping. Yeah, 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 you want to do a good job. You want to make it look as real as you can. Have you ever got injured in the ring and didn't even know? Well, I usually know what it is. Like, <laughs> Because <laughs> oh, people, that's it, I love that people. Does it, that stuff hurt? Mm. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything like fashion-wise you don't like, like outside in the real world? No, I, I'm pretty tolerant, as you can see, man. I, you I know, know you have my favorite <laughs> shoes on. Yeah, I buy yeah, those yeah, in bulk. Yeah. Keeping it simple. So back in the 80s, though, back in your day, like, how did you dress back then? Well, you know, back then, because you were working all the time. And if you're on the road, you want to get by with two carry-on bags. Yeah. So it was a lot of sweats, a lot of Zuba sweats, a lot of T-shirts. TSA would stop you. They're like, hold it. You want to look through your bag. I'm like, help yourself, brother. No. <laughs> Nothing in there but dirty trunks and shocks, man. They'll be like, oh, let's go on. So how much maintenance do you think it took for, like, some of those guys? You know, I like to say, you know, the biggest competition on the good guy side is for mirror space. All oh, the oh, guys yeah. are in there. How's my hair look? You know, I look pretty good today. You know? I got a few pictures of some wrestlers I want to show you, and I want you to tell me what you think about their style. Their style? Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. First step, none other than Bret Hart. The girls loved him. He was a handsome guy, so he liked to show his chest. Now, why would you wear suspenders to have your nipples out? That's kind of productive to me. You want to stick out in the crowd, and they wore the hot pink like that. That's for the ladies. <laughs> Next up, we got None other who I think it was the stylish ever. Macho. Snap into a Slim Jim. We got Macho <laughs> Man. Oh, he was great. I mean, and you know what? He was one of these ahead of his time, too, because every pay-per-view ever made in show, he would change his gear. Oh, yeah. So all his gear is that much more collectible. Got the gold on. It's almost look like a pimp. <laughs> so how much do you think Macho Man used to pay for all this stuff? Oh, like Macho had his own costume designer that uh, he staff? used all the time. Wow. Yeah, they had to spend a lot, a lot of money. That's why a two-by-four works, you know? <laughs> $1.95 at Lowe's. Hell, yeah. <laughs> Next up. 
We got this guy right here. Go, Dust. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know if that's a style or a... <laughs> I mean, that was a stretch, because, you know, they put that gimmick on him, and I, I don't think he liked it at first. It worked. That's a strange gimmick. I mean, <laughs> that's strange. That's, it was pretty freaky. That, that's a big paint job to do every night before the show. And not to mention, you got to get it all off before you go out, you yeah. know? Yeah. Goldust was a confusing character, though, for kids. Like, we didn't know what the fuck was going not on. Not just for kids. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked for him, and he had a good run as Goldust. Yeah, it turned out one of my favorite wrestlers, man. Yeah. Yeah, Hexa. Thanks for coming to the crib, man. It was great to have you, man. Well, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. But you know what we got to do on the way out, brother? Ho! <laughs> That's some good hold, brother. Yeah. We'll see you later. Uh, out of my way. Say goodbye. USA! 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 <laughs>